Welcome everybody to Salvation Saturdays. Today marks our third week together meeting to talk about salvation, the salvation of God, um, souls. And so together when we meet on Saturdays, we're going to come together, we're going to read the word, we're going to find out what the Lord is saying, um, in regards to what is he speaking to the people, to those that don't know him yet, those that he wants to send you out and minister to today. Um, I like to do this on Saturdays because, you know, we're out and about during our free time encountering many different people, people that we wouldn't normally encounter during our daily week routine. So. The weekend is a good time to um, share the gospel. You should be doing that every day, <laughs> but share it with those that you wouldn't normally get the opportunity to share these truths with. So today we're going to start off in Mark chapter five, verse one, and I am going to be reading from the New Living Translation. So if you wanna go with me, Come on in, and we're going to get started. So before um, I read this passage of scripture, let me just tell you this morning when I was like, what would you have me to speak to them about, Holy Spirit? What would you have me to say? I heard this clearly over and over again, lifeline, lifeline. I am their lifeline. There's many people today that need to know that. They don't know Jesus as their lifeline, as the lifeline, but that is exactly who he is. That is why he has come. He has come to rescue, to save, to set free. He is your lifeline. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over this live. I pray over this broadcast. I pray over everyone who would come in to hear the word of the Lord, that your spiritual ears would be open, your spiritual eyes would be open, that you would be able to hear and see what the Lord is saying for you today, that you would be able to receive it that the word of God would go down and take deep root in your spirit, in your soul, um, even in your body, because the word of God is health and healing to our bodies, refreshment to our bones. So if, even if you are dealing with any um, physical ailments today, I pray that as you hear the word of God, that the word of God will minister healing to you, that you would experience a refreshing in your soul, in your mind, in your thoughts, your thought life, your um, emotions, your feelings, that you would experience a refreshing, a, re a renewal of joy, a fresh wind would come into you. I pray that you would even feel um, the refreshing, anointing, the wind of God, restoring you even in your bones, your bone marrow, your, your joints, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, every area of your body that would be even fatigued, feeling depleted, depressed. I pray in the name of Jesus that as the word of God goes out and goes forth, that you will fully receive it into your physical body and it would bring health and healing to your body that you would be restored in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. I pray that the word of God would go down deep, take root in your life, and that it would be watered, watered by the word of God, that you would hear the word of God and that it would be um, refreshing to you, refreshing to your soul, that that word would bear fruit in your life, that it would bring you deeper and further into the things of God in the kingdom. I pray that your soul would be saved. I pray that you would come into a personal, uh, real relationship 
with the lifeline, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you would come to know him in new ways, deeper ways, ways that you've never dreamed or even thought imaginable, even possible, that you would experience him as your Lord, your savior, your rescuer, your redeemer, your healer, your deliverer, your lifeline, in Jesus' name. And so today we are in Mark chapter five, verse one. And this is the account of Jesus coming with the disciples and they have come upon this man um, whom my Bible describes as the um, demoniac. And he was living in the Gerasenes. This, um, this is a place. <laughs> he was living amongst the tombs. So your Bible may um, have different names for uh, this section of the passage, but mine says Jesus heals a demon-possessed man. Um, another translation says Jesus restored the demon-possessed man. Another translation says um, the madman. So I wanted to give you the different translations there because it's important that you understand what type of man Jesus has just come upon. This man was described as a madman, someone who was being influenced by demons, someone who was actually possessed by them, and not just one, but many of them. And so he was an outcast, literally, um, spiritually, he was an outcast. He was not living amongst the regular population. He was um, deemed crazy, a madman, schizophrenia. He was, um, you know, thought of as maybe um, mentally ill, bipolar, different things like that. So let's read. Let's read about him and how Jesus rescued him. It says, so they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out of the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with the chain. So this man is walking around, living amongst the tombs, amongst the dead. He is influenced and possessed by demonic spirits. These demonic spirits, because this is their MO, right? They get this from Satan himself. We read in the word of God that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So naturally they gravitate to, and they like to be in environments that are secluded, isolated. Um, they want to seclude you, make you isolated. They are in places, um, he was living amongst dead things, death, in a cemetery, in the caves. Death was all around him. He was isolated, alone, out of his mind, depressed. And this man, it says that he could no longer be restrained, even with the chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue, subdue him. Why is that? Because when someone is influenced, possessed by demonic spirits, they have a supernatural strength. They are empowered by demonic spirits. So people could not subdue him. They couldn't restrain him. And even this is why he would break and snap the chains off of him. It says, um, day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. So this man, when he would break free, 
he could have went back into with the populated area, but where did the demons have him? Isolated, alone, wandering, amongst the dead, surrounded by death. He was howling and cutting himself. He was not acting out of his right mind. He was acting like an animal. It says that he was cutting himself with sharp stones. He was a cutter. This is brought on by demonic spirits. So this is relatable to today. Do you know anyone who is um, isolated? They isolate themselves or they feel like they just cannot be around people. Something about being around people. Or they gravitate to things like death. They talk about death. They have a preoccupation with death. Dark things. They, um, they uh, do things like cutting. It talks about how he was cutting himself with sharp stones. So sometimes we see these different things and we're like, well, that's just coping. That's just a way for them to take their mind off of something. Maybe they have pain in this area and they're trying to um, refocus on something else that helps them to cope with this. There's a demonic spirit behind that demonic spirits influencing people to inflict harm on themselves, cut themselves, harm themselves, potentially killing themselves. This is the product or the byproduct of demonic fluences at work. So someone would say, do you really believe that someone who um, is depressed or isolated or chooses to isolate themselves or uh, maybe cuts themselves or has different um, tendencies like that where they're um, not completely there in their mind. Do you really think that they are influenced by demons? Yes, I do. We see this right here in scripture. This is not the product of a normal person. This is not the product of um, godly behavior. This is not a result of Jesus or God or knowing um, the Lord. This isn't something that you see. This is something more sinister at work. It says he was possessed by an evil spirit. Evil spirits are from the demonic kingdom. They are in Satan's uh, kingdom. So this is Satan's um, work. In verse 6 it says, When Jesus was still coming some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. So let's stop right there. So the man, while Jesus was some distance away, it says that the man saw him and bowed low before him. Was this the man or the demonic spirit? Could have been either, but the fact that we hear that um, the demonic spirit cries out to him and screams, why are you trying to interfere with me? Don't torture me. Well, this is the demon speaking. This is not the person. And the fact that he's bowing down low, this is similar to how we read about in the word of God, how um, all, all beings, even the demonic spirits, have to come and present themselves to the Lord. They have to give an account to the Lord. They bow in the presence of the Lord. So this is what we're seeing here is the demon recognizing Jesus, the Son of God, God himself has come on the scene and he, he realizes he is in real trouble. He cannot stay. He can no longer afflict this man, oppress this man, possess this man. 
It says, verse 8, For Jesus had, all, had already said to the Spirit, not to the man, he knew what was at work there. He knew what was behind these behaviors, these tendencies. Jesus had spoke to the Spirit. And he said to the Spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Verse 9 says, Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. How many of you know when Jesus asks a question, it isn't because he doesn't know the answer. Jesus is omniscient. He knows all. If you see Jesus asking a question in the scriptures or him asking you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He's highlighting something to bring to your attention or revealing something to us in scripture. In this case, he was revealing to us that Yes, this man was possessed by a demon. It is possible. And not only one demon, but many demons. This word legion here represents anywhere from um, 1,500 to 6,000. In this particular case, it, as we read further in the passage, we read it was about 2,000 demons. How is it possible for a person to be possessed and indwelled by 2,000 demons. It's possible. And it says, he said that there are many of us inside this man. Verse 10, then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There had been, there happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. Verse 13, so Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered into the pigs. And the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion, the 2,000 demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane and they were all afraid. So this man who was just possessed by 2,000 demons, who was screaming, howling, crying out amongst the dead in the cemetery, breaking chains, ripping shackles off himself, supernatural strength, isolated, alone, out of his mind, now that he's come in contact with Jesus, Jesus has set him free. He's delivered him. He's restored him. He's restored him in his mind. He has his right mind back. He's been restored. He is sitting there no longer naked, no longer ashamed. He is fully clothed and fully sane says verse 16 then those who had been who had seen what had happened told the others about the demon possessed man and the pigs and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone why was that well the pigs represented their livestock their money their this is how they made um, their living and they just lost all of their um, their money. It went down the hill. <laughs> they drowned. So they were simply um, thinking um, naturally, natural-minded about money and material things. Never mind the man that has been restored. Never mind the man that has just been set free, delivered received complete and total healing from Jesus Christ. Never mind that the Son of God has just come on the scene. 
they were still focused on worldly things. Their spiritual eyes were not opened. They couldn't receive. Had they have been able to receive, this conversation would have been a little different. And Jesus was getting into the boat. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. He didn't want to stay there with the spiritually blind people. He didn't want to stay there with the people that could not even recognize that God was amongst them. He didn't want to stay with the people that um, just wanted to stay in their status quo as things were. He wanted to go with Jesus. Once you've encountered Jesus, you never go back. You never want to turn back. You always want to stay close to Jesus. You always want him to stick by your side. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the 10 towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. So Jesus said, I'm sure he said, it's, it's okay. I'm still with you. I'll never leave you. But go testify, tell people about what the Lord has done for you. Let them know that there is a savior, a deliverer, a healer. He can save you. He can help you. Look what he's done for me. And today we're talking about lifelines, Jesus being that lifeline. And when I thought about that this morning, the scripture, um, Hebrews 6, came to me. And I want to read from the message translation. This is not a word for word translation, but this is a thought for thought translation. So this will give you a um, better understanding of what they were saying then for the people today. So it gives it to you in a more modern way. So I'm reading Hebrews chapter six, verse 13 through 20. It says, when God made his, pro his, his promise to Abraham, when God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it all the way, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. Has the Lord made you any promises? Stick it out. He's faithful to keep his promise. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question that they'll make good on that promise, the authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word. That is the highest authority. He gave his word a solid, a rock solid decree a rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. He can't. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. What he has promised you is his word. He cannot break his word. He cannot break his promise. His word is unchangeable. His promises are unchangeable. Verse 20 says, we who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. Reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God where Jesus running on ahead of us has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us in order in the order of Melchizedek Matthew 
verse, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 through 29. It says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for that is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. I love that because it says some people get so wrapped up in the logic of things, in the rationalization of things. How is this possible? And we know from the word of God, it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because you have to have faith to even believe that he exists, to even come to him and to take him at his word. And so it says that it's not the wise and the learned that receive this, but it's those who are like little children who just come in awe and great expectation, full of faith, and they just believe. And because of that, they're able to receive. And those are the ones whom the Son, Jesus Christ, reveals the Lord God to. Verse 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Some are going to all types of things in the world because they're weary, they're tired, and they're looking in all the wrong places for things that will give them hope, that will bring them comfort, that will settle them for a period of time in their minds, their souls, that will bring them a temporary joy, temporary high, focus their mind and their energy on something else for a while. But the Word of God says those are only temporary things. They're not going to fix the issue. The Word of God says to come to Jesus, all who are weary, all who are burdened, that are carrying heavy loads that they cannot continue to bear and carry themselves. It says come to Jesus and he will give you rest. What does that mean? He will take you in. He will lift the heavy burdens off of you. You won't have to carry those anymore. It says to commit all your cares to him, all your anxieties, put them on him. Don't carry those anymore. It says to take his yoke upon you and learn from him. Learn from him in the word. What is he saying? He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Are you tired? You feel like you just can't continue to keep going on. Jesus is inviting you to release all that to him and to receive his invitation so that you can find rest, so you can be restored. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes people choose to not accept his invitation and to continue to carry things on their own, thinking they've got this. They know what's best. They don't need any help. You are just um, prolonging. You're prolonging this unnecessarily. You don't have to carry those burdens. Why would you want to when Jesus can carry them for you and completely turn them around? Acts, first, Acts chapter 2, verse 31, 37 through 41. Again, Acts chapter 2, verse 37 through 41 says, Now when they heard this, this was Peter preaching to them, says, when these unbelievers, they heard this message of the gospel of Jesus, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Remember, repent means to turn away. Turn away from all the things that are not benefiting you. 
they're actually harming you. Repent means to change your mind, change course, turn from those things, turn from sin and the life of ungodliness, and turn toward God, turn towards Jesus. He says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, the Holy Spirit, and this salvation is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. That's us today. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. We are in a crooked generation. You need to save yourself and save as many as you can along the way. But this message is for you. Save yourself. So those who received his word were baptized and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. Quite the message that was preached where 3,000 people received in faith the word of God and were saved. And then Romans chapter, nine, chapter 10 verse 9 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a promise. That's the word of God. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a promise. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth is Jesus. It's the word of God. It's what I'm preaching you today. This is how you get set free. Psalm chapter 17 verse 6 says, I call upon you for you will answer me, O oh God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Are you calling out to God? If so, he hears you, he's inclining his ear to you, and he will answer you. So, let's pray. If this is something that you feel is for you. It's speaking to your heart. Week after week, you feel like the Lord is trying to draw you in, trying to show you his love, his grace, his mercy, his goodness, wanting to restore you, heal you, deliver you, set you free, give you a new outlook, a fresh perspective, the right perspective, then join me in this prayer and fully believe in faith, knowing that you will be saved and it's by his grace. So right now, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. This is in Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Your word says it, and so it is true. I am calling on you today. I pray and ask to, for you, Jesus, to come into my heart, my life and be Lord over my life according to your word in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10. You said if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, just as if I had never sinned. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. I do that now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me of all my sins. I repent of them now. I ask you to cleanse me, wash me, purify me from all unrighteousness. Holy Spirit, I invite you in to my life. Help me to leave a life of ungodliness. And I ask you to sanctify me, purify me, give me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit, transform my mind through your word, the word of God. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are now a child of God. You have been saved. He's rescued you. You set, he set you free. If you pray that prayer, send me a message. I, I want to know. I want to be praying for you. And I want to um, be of any assist assistance I can to you. If you need any help, any resources, um, if you just want someone to um, show you what's next, what to do now, reach out to me, send me a message. And if you need any other resources, again, you can visit my YouTube channel. It's at Danielle Spears 144. And there's lots of messages on there. There's messages to address inner healing issues, where we're talking about things with your um, mind, your emotions, your feelings, trauma, past, rejection, hurts, things that you've been through in your life that you need freedom from, you need counseling, you need help. That is on my page under Vital Fire. That is the, um, the playlist that you will find that under. And there's also other resources there. I find that when you become a child of God right away, he goes to work and starts um, helping you to address different things. And inner healing and deliverance is usually first on the list. So again, if you pray that prayer, welcome. Welcome into the family of God. You have now entered into the uh kingdom of God and your life will never be the same will be forever changed for the glory of God so I just pray over you today that you will continue to grow in wisdom with God and that you would have favor that you would have favor upon your um, path that you would walk in paths of righteousness and that you would um, grow in the things of God and that you would be um, that you would find that he would show you exactly where you are to be planted to grow to grow in the kingdom that he would put the right people in your path to come alongside you that you would lean into the Holy Spirit because he's there to guide you it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 
see you guys on Monday for Motivational Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody.